<laughs> I can't do it. Oh, wait. <gasps> I can feel it. <gasps> the power. Oh, hi. I've been waiting for you to begin. I'm guessing you're here to learn how to draw amazing looking fantasy body types like these. Non-human, you know? Well, that's what we're about to do in this episode of my weekly series that I call YouTube Art School. Let's start with a human body and go from there. It's a lot easier. I'll bring one I did in a previous class to have a starting point. Here, there we go. Ugh. What makes a good fantasy body though? Proportions? Good anatomy? Obviously, but the trick is to push the limits. Push those enough, but not too much so that it remains aesthetic. Now let's uh, try again. Which body type are we going to end up with this time? If we stretch this character vertically a little bit, maybe lengthen the neck, the torso, the limbs. In about the same proportions, maybe let's also make the body slimmer, more agile. We get something that looks almost like a... I can't quite put my finger on it. Hmm. Ah! I meant an elf, of course. <laughs> that was easy. Now, what made that work? Might seem simple, but it's easy to mess up. So let's introduce rule number one. Maintain the limb proportions when adjusting their length. If the upper arm gets longer, for example, so does the lower arm and the hand. And then just as important, if the arms as a whole get longer, so do the legs. Now, in just a minute, we'll see how we can break all four of the rules that I want to explain today, including rule number one, but not yet. We have to know them first to break them. Strong logic. Now, what would the male version look like real quick before we move on to the next fantasy body? To make him look distinctively male based on good old stereotypes, let's widen his shoulders a bit and narrow his waist because males usually have narrower hip bones. All right, get a room, you two. Get out of here. Wait, no, come back. Just, just you though. And by the way, if you like how I teach, I created a massive art program for a complete art education that I believe you'd get a lot out of. Check the coupon code in the video description to get a big discount on it until the end of the month. And if you're already one of my nearly 9,000 students, thank you. I love you. Now back to you. We're about to turn you into a, a demon. <laughs> no turning back now. It's transforming. We can start by grabbing these shoulders and pulling them apart. Hmm, That's not quite it. Let's make the arms even bigger too. Nice, but now that kind of looks like a chimp. If we remember rule number one though, we should also make the legs longer and bigger along with the arms. And since he's a demon, why don't we make him into a digitigrade or for the uneducated? Give him legs like uh, those of a dog or a wolf walking on his toes, basically. Humans are called plantigrades since we walk on the entire foot. In this case, this is the foot. He's just tiptoeing around. That's cute. Still though, he looks kind of ridiculous, doesn't he? His torso is way too small now and looks like he's got basically no neck. So let's pull on this a little bit. <laughs> Stretch this out. Basically, I'm trying to maintain this cross-shaped proportion here. It's essentially the spine that we're stretching as I'm pulling the shoulders apart. Important since a lot of the muscles attach onto the spine. They need to have enough room to grow and provide a sufficient amount of strength to move the limbs around. Longer limbs need more strength to move. Of course, he's still missing something important. Hmm. His horns. Now, for his female counterpart, I am um, I'm just going to change the stance a little bit to make her look a little more elegant so she can devour you with grace. That's nice. But also, just like I did before, shorter, wider hips for females, slightly narrower shoulders, and overall just a lesser bone structure and muscle mass compared to the males. Easy. From this body type, I think we could easily move on to the um, anthropomorphic body type. They already have animal legs, so we're off to a good start. Chop chop, horns be gone. To draw good human animal hybrids though, we'll have to pick a dominant side since the anatomy is quite different. Is it gonna be primarily the animal side or the human side? For me today, human it is. So the animal features will need to adjust to the human anatomy. The ears, for example, let's say this one is a, a fennec fox woman. Well, we can't just put the ears on top of the head. 
that makes no sense. Our ear canals are on both sides of our head, not on top, so the ears have to align with that. The same for the tail. It has to be in a similar position as our tailbone. It needs to follow the flow of our spine. Tails are full of muscles, so they need a proper structure to attach to. Can't just attach it anywhere on the back. And this is going to be what rule number three is all about. Make sure the anatomy is logical. You can't really fake anatomy. These details are as important as, you know, having an eye width distance in between your eyes when you draw characters. If it's off, your character is going to look pretty derpy. Derp. Now we can still adjust the length of the limbs though little bits to make them look closer to the proportion of the animals uh, well, that they're inspired from. The monkey man. In his case, he's got longer arms than legs to match, you know, monkey proportions. But still following rule number one and two, if I were to modify this guy, like lengthen the limbs or the torso, I would need to do that within those proportions. Next, the example for the last rule will be a dwarf body type. So let's just start that one from scratch. It's way too different than uh, any of these. So following the previous rules that we've seen before, well, we'll build a body that has normal limbs, but with a shorter torso this time, which means we also need to make the shoulders narrower and the neck shorter to go along with it. Essentially the opposite that we did for the demons. Now I look like a really short person with no neck. We're getting there, but what are dwarves known for in fantasy worlds? They're blacksmiths, right? Like miners working in forges, mining stuff, building impressive structures. They're a strong race, but like physically strong. So they need the muscle mass to go along with it. Slap! And that's the fourth and last rule. Adjust the overall bulk or the overall muscle mass depending on the character's way of life. It's not just muscle mass though, it's the thickness of the bones too. Maybe that's obvious, maybe not. But giving too much bulk or too little to a character can really destroy how believable it is. Good fantasy body types should look believable, like they could exist in real life. Elves don't need bulk since they're all about agility and speed. Demons are like predators though, so they should be built like hunters, fast and strong to catch their prey without any weapons. For anthropomorphic characters, it'll just depend on the animal that you know, you're creating the hybrid with. Like this one, for example, he's not a gorilla, so he's not particularly muscular. He's more like a small monkey. But now that we know the rules, what happens if we break them? So far, these characters have been pretty aesthetic. You know, that's the whole point of the rules, creating characters that have good balance, good proportions overall. Breaking the rules will, oh God, it won't be aesthetic anymore, but maybe that's fine. If the character needs to look creepy, like um, what is this? Silly short legs, really long arms. We're breaking rule number one already. Mm, a long torso, but a short stumpy neck. Breaking rule number two. Oh god, how worse can it get? His anatomy is all sorts of deformed, big muscular forearms, long shoulders, underdeveloped chest in comparison, and a big gut. Because he's so big, his abdominal muscles can barely hold his guts in after eating so many people. Mm. Basically, when we break the rules, we end up with monstrosities such as this. An ogre. Deformed creatures that display a lack of visual aesthetics, poor balance between the visual elements, and therefore look more repulsive. That's what you get when you break the rules. Now, that's not always bad, of course. This can be done on purpose, but at least it should make more sense as to why that is. Why does it look ugly? Because we're breaking those rules. So let's call this rule number five. Break the previous rules to create monsters and creatures. Now, obviously, all of this started from a well-proportioned human body. So make sure you get a handle on that first. To that effect, check out a recent class that I made on the topic on drawing the human body, if that's something that you struggle with a little bit more. It's a popular one. But before you do, make sure that you pay the class fee of either one like or one sub. It's the law. And as an extra reward, I'll give you my own custom brush set containing most of my favorite brushes for free, including the one that I use for all of today's drawings. If you haven't paid the class fee though, it's illegal to use them. <laughs> okay, bye.